Well, hello. Thank you for coming tonight and uh, showing up here at uh, Keep in Touch Crafts. I'm Teresa. Thank you for tuning in. And it is uh, Thursday. We are going to be looking at um, using our black and white DSP, which is designer series paper, as many of you know, who have been uh, following me a little bit and who use any Stampin' Up! products. We call our designer series paper, which is kind of our patterned paper. We, um, we are going to be using some of that tonight, and I'm going to show you how you can do some coloring on that and add the colors that you want to use and um, make that, more, that black and white paper more versatile. I just love having black and white patterned paper so that I can um, create it and use it to, um, um, to be able to coordinate with a whole lot of different projects that you can do. So we're going to be doing a special fold tonight, and we're going to use some of that black and white um, DSP. We're going to color it, and I'm going to give you some uh, samples, too, that you can see as well. So, um, welcome again, and we are um, going to be getting some instructions soon here out to you about a lot of various products that are going to be coming out in our August 3rd. Um, we have a smaller catalog called our mini catalog coming out on August 3rd. A whole bunch of products in there. Everything from just your standard, well they're not standard, they're wonderful, but your, um, just the regular products that we normally have a whole new line of things. Plus some um, quite a few things that you can use for the holidays too. So that's kind of fun to have some new things to look at. And those of us who are demonstrators, are this is such a fun time because we are busy. We are um, trying all kinds of the new products out. We're getting new ideas, making projects, we're getting together for trainings. Um, we're, we're just doing a lot together to be ready for this. So that's why it's, it's busy, but it's also really fun because we have more things that we're doing together and, and um, looking at each other's creativity. Um, so that's just one of the things that, uh, that is so fun about being a demonstrator. And you don't have to do this with the business part of it in mind. You can be a hobby demonstrator as well, which is somebody who just does it for fun. So just a little tidbit to keep in mind coming up here. Um, we're going to be having some fun things rolling out here in August, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'm going to show you the cover of our mini catalog here. Um, that's the one that is going to be starting. It says July, but due to shipping issues, they pushed it back to August 3rd, and that is when celebration starts as well. So um, there are going to be a lot of fun goodies in there for us to be crafting with. If you do not have one of these catalogs and you would like one, please let me know. Uh, I'm happy to get one out to you. I also have a flyer for uh, Celebration, it's called. And Celebration, we have a couple of times a year. And it is really fun because just with your regular order, um, you can earn free products. So it's a great time to uh, get a little extra paper or extra stamp sets and that kind of thing with your purchase that... Um, that you wouldn't normally get so it's a good deal um, and I'm going to be showing a few projects uh, and I already have maybe but I know tonight I'm going to be using some of the free things so that you can kind of get an idea of what's coming and I'm going to show you a sample of um, one of the sweets uh, the paper that's coming out for that because one of the sweets happens to have black and white in it and one of the free items is black and white so that's what we're going to be looking at as I was saying earlier um, so I guess with that, we're ready to get going. Um, I will try to keep this quick because you probably want to go watch the Olympics like I do. <laughs> um, go gymnastics, right? Uh, I have already heard what happens, but it's so fun. I love this time of year, and I love watching gymnastics. So we will try to balance everything. If you know, A lot of you might be catching me on the replay because you're watching that right now, and I don't blame you one bit. So um, feel free to say hi either way if you're live, if you're watching uh, the replay on Facebook or on YouTube. Say hi and let me know that you're tuning in. And I'm happy to have you on and thank you for joining me again. So I will get to crafting. Okay, let's put our camera down here. There we go, onto the work surface. Um, so as I was saying, 
you saw you saw this already so that is something I can send out to you and the celebration is the catalog that'll become or going live on August 3rd and that is the one that goes until September 30th this catalog goes until the end of December so if you um, want to get some of the free products this goes to September 30th okay Great. All right. So um, one thing I'm going to do is show you the black and white patterned paper that I am going to be using for tonight's projects. This is um, an item that you can get um, as a free option if you place a $50 order in the new catalog. It's called Beautifully Penned, and it does coordinate with um, our other pen suite that we have. Um, hand penned it's called and it's similar it's some of the similar prints to it but it is a little different but it does coordinate with that stamp set and some of the other items that are in that suite which is in our annual catalog so um, if you have any of those those kind of coordinate nicely with this so I'm gonna just show you what the paper looks like everything is black and white on both sides and you're gonna see the versatility of that tonight so here are some of the papers. This is one. This is the back side of that. Um, it's just kind of a, looks like a watercolor wash on the background. So that's kind of different. And then the next one with that same kind of a watercolor wash is more of a stripe. And on the opposite side of the stripe is this beautiful floral, hand penned floral um, pattern. Then we have this kind of a hand penned, kind of a wavy, look to it a scallop I guess that would be and then we have this one as, as a different pattern uh, different floral pattern here I believe that's all of them you do get what does it say here um, it's 12 by 12 so that's the size of it and uh, you get 12 sheets in the in this packet so if it's something you're interested in, just know that that's one of your free choices coming up in the next celebration catalog. So we are going to use some products tonight to uh, color some of this paper. And um, here is my color palette that I'm going to be using. We're going to just kind of go subtle here. I have some other samples that that are a little bit more colorful or, or not colorful, but more bright, I guess you'd say. Um, and so here is what you need if you're going to be making this at home. Um, you're going to need a stamp set that has like a focal point. I'm using color and contour. You can use a hand pen too. That would be amazing with it. Um, I'm going to use this uh, centerpiece or this focal point stamp. And then I'm going to have it um, be for kind of a... Um, you know, it's one, what does it say here? Um, here for you now is going to go on the front and then, um, and in better days ahead. So it's kind of a sympathy or a tough times type of um, sentiments that I'm going to be using. But they aren't all that way. Like, you are absolutely amazing. So very happy for you. Thank you for everything is also part of that. This is a stamp set that is a two-step two stamping. You do not have to do it that way, but it's very cool how... You, can, you stamp your main image, and then you have another stamp that you can stamp this, and it'll fill in the flower color, and you stamp right over it, or vice versa. You could do the, the colors and then stamp your outline image on top of it. Um, I am, I've chosen just to use the outline image, and then we're going to use some blends to color it in. You can do it however you want. There's many options. I also like how it has this little spray pattern available. Um, just kind of the, a, a, like a hand-penned, it looks like hand-penned, but it's like a hand-drawn look to this daisy or this flower as well, and a little small one there, more like a bud, I guess, and a leaf. Um, so that's what's in the color and contour set. And I'm going to use these in a second. Um, so what you need is um, for your base of your card, you are going to get, I'm using So Saffron, and it is four and a quarter by seven and a half. So four and a quarter this way, seven and a half, and it's scored in the center at three and three fourths. Okay, so that's the base of it. Then I also took 
um, what I'm using for dies tonight, any circles will do that if you happen to have circle punches, circle whatever, dies, a, a set. Um, this is the one I'm using, and this is called Layering Circle Dies, and it comes with all of these. There's a whole set of them that are the scalloped, and the whole set that are uh, just more of this plain circle or smooth edge, and they work well together. So I am going to be using the largest of the um, just smooth for, I'm going to be using two of those. One is going to be on the front and one on the inside with our sentiment. So um, I'm using this one. Let's see how big it is here. So I am cutting out two of those, and it is roughly a three-inch circle. Okay. Then I am using the second to the small or second to the largest scalloped edge die, and that one is just a about two and seven eighths. So it layers perfectly onto that larger one that I cut out. And you'll be seeing that in a second here. Um, let's get all those supplies out. I just put them all in my envelope here. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. Here is the, the large So Saffron um, die that is cut out the largest one I was showing you before. So I just did that ahead of time. To save a little time then I also um, am doing the inside with one of those and I'm going to be cutting out um, was this the one I was using oh actually a scalloped circle I'm going to be cutting out for um, gosh am I confused I might be okay what am I good doing um, this I need two three inch squares that's what this is for two three inch squares and I'm going to be stamping the sentiment um, on one of them, and that's going to go on the inside. Then I'm going to stamp the sentiment on the other one, not the sentiment, but that floral image, and then I'm going to cut it out with this largest, um, largest smooth, was that what I was going to do? Yeah, so I'm going to be cutting out with the scalloped one. Oh gosh, guys, I'm so sorry, I'm just kind of getting lost here, but... I'm going to be using two white pieces for the scent, one for the sentiment, one for the floral center piece that's going to layer onto the yellow circle here. Does that make sense? I'll show you. That'll be better. <laughs> I'm talking in circles. Okay, so this is one thing we're going to have to complete. This is something we're just using as a layer. Okay, so that I already did ahead of time. Then. We have um, this paper is um, that patterned paper, and um, it is four inches wide by three and a half inches high. So it is wider than it is tall, four by three and a half. We're going to be coloring this, and I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to use blending brushes. You can use blend markers. You can use, a, um, if you would have a brayer, you could do that. Um, a, sponge daubers, whatever you have for coloring is one of the things you can do. You can do so many things with these. Um, you could use watercolor pencils, uh, anything like that as well. All right, so I am going to be coloring that in. We'll be doing that as well. And then I'll be finishing the card off. I'll show you the rest as we go, okay? So um, let's, grab, let's grab our piece that is going to go on the front and we'll get to coloring this. So I'm gonna use the two colors for this card as I was telling you earlier. I am using the Fresh Freesia, Freesia, and the So Saffron. And you know, you can color individually, but I'm gonna um, show you how to kind of color and make it, uh, it's sort of like an ombre, but a gradient is more like what it is, I think. So let me get some, my blending brushes. And I've shown you these before. I use them all the time. I'm going to use the one I have for yellow. And then I have one set aside for more of the purpley type of... I guess I could really even use pink on that one too. Since it's so light, I'm going to use pink. I just like to keep the similar colored brushes together or so that they don't combine. You can... I've gotten... I got by with just one for quite a while. 
and I just clean it more often. Um, I don't really clean them very much, but uh, that's okay. It you can do it whatever works best for you. They come in a in a set of three, so that's kind of nice. Um, again, they're the blending brushes. So I am going to use this um, so saffron. This is just a real subtle uh, yellow kind of a color, and this card I'm purposely making a more more of a subtle wash of color on here and um, but you can use bright colors you can use um, you know whatever you're using for your project and so that's what makes this so versatile it takes black and white and changes it into whatever color you want to use on your project and so it's really fun to be able to do whatever you know mix it up a little bit so I just want you to see that you don't need to only use it for um, black and white or, you know, white. Some of we, we use black and white a lot with maybe red or those colors, but you can make this into whatever you want, right? So there is, um, there is part of it. And then I'm going to switch inks and I'm going to go into the other color. And that is just going to be kind of on the background of the front of this card. I usually um, rub it in my ink pad, and then I kind of rub a little bit on the paper first, and that just makes it so you don't have a harsh line or a harsh um, spot on there where the ink kind of is real um, blotchy. And it just helps it to be more smooth. And these blending brushes are nice because they don't put a ton of color down all at once. So it makes it really easy to blend and, um, and again, not have those harsh lines as much. And you can choose to concentrate the color a little more on one spot. I do that kind of on the corners. I sometimes tend to be a little darker and, and the edges and a little lighter on the inside. All right, so look how fast that was. No time at all, right? So that is all I'm going to do to color this piece. And... Um, I'm going to try to get it up so you can see it a little better. You can see the color. It just kind of fades from one color to the next. And then that is going to go on the front of the card. So this was our card base. And I'm going to adhere that onto this. And I haven't even shown you the finished product yet. And I've done that on purpose. Because I want you to kind of see how it comes together and how easy it is. So I am going to be using the liquid uh, multi-purpose glue here. You can use oh, any, whatever you have. If you have like a seal, that also works well. And I think it, now you could have the, it either way with the, the color and going in either direction. Because this patterned paper doesn't have a um, pattern that goes in a specific way. So you can put it on whatever way you want. Okay, so that's kind of roughly what the start of the front. And then I was thinking about putting this on the inside as well. And um, to do that, then I would need to, I could have just made two of these at the same time as what I should have done. Um, but it just depends on how you want to finish the inside. I had a little corner just pop up here. And so I'm going to go... Oh, actually, let me get my cutter here, guys. Well, I'm going to get the little one here. So, again, I don't know if you remembered that it was four inches wide. And I'm just having using my little tape, my little cheater one here. Four by three and a half. And, you know, for the inside, you could even choose just to leave it black and white if you want. But I just kind of want to carry that color theme into the inside very, very subtly. I barely even want it to show. And I will be putting um, a circle over this with the sentiment, so not even all of this is going to show that much. I think I maybe better grab just a little bit more of the ink. But this is a quick way to make a card and to color your cardstock as you saw right all right that's good enough 
and add a titch more of this Fresh Freesia color onto this edge. Just, I'm hardly even putting it on. Just a little hint. Okay. Okay, so then we can put that on the inside just like we did on the outside. And then, like I said, it's just gonna kind of be in the background. You're not gonna really, I'm not, you, that's just too, um, too busy, I guess, for the inside without something over it because you would want to have a little room in case you want to write a note on the inside of it. All right, there we go. Oh, <laughs> I slid it just a little too fast. That's the nice part about the glue, the liquid glue is that it does slip, but I got a little carried away a little bit too early. So now I gotta see if I can salvage this. I think I got it quick enough. Wow, so that's what you don't wanna do. <laughs> okay, I think I hit it. I think it'll be all right. Phew. I'm gonna probably have a little adhesive to remove which is nothing new with, for me with, my, um, with this type of glue. I usually get a messy. Okay, a little bit on the side here for where it slipped. But again, this is the nice part about this glue is you, you can um, pretty easily get it off if you get a little crazy like I did. Okay. That's part of that. Now, this is going to go here so that when you open the card, um, when you open it, it just kind of goes back here like that. And so, you know, it's it adds the height of the card right here. You can adjust it to however tall you want it to be. I like to keep it in the size that can fit into the four and a quarter five and a half the envelopes that we use for that so I know I don't want to make this any taller than that or any yeah taller um, and I usually don't go that high with it even so but I do like to have my um, envelope just close by so I can make sure I'm not gonna go too too tall with it so what I am gonna do then is um, I'm gonna put some adhesive just on the bottom third or so of one of these circles or of this circle and um, that is how I'm going to adhere this on the, in the center towards the top Gotta make sure I'm saying it staying in the screen in the screen making sure my glue is down so that it's going where I want it to go okay centered and all right that looks pretty good so I have that in place. So now the circle that I am going to be putting here is going to be that focal point that we're going to stamp and color and then cut it out with the scalloped, uh, that second to the largest scalloped edge. And I'll show you that in a minute, but that's going to fit on there. So we can do a little more stamping here. Might as well do all the stamping at once. I want to do an inside sentiment, I want to do a front, and I think that's it. <laughs> okay, so I have the stamps um, already on my blocks, and so there's three. Oh yeah, one of them is also for like a little, uh, little sentiment for on the front. All right, so here is, um, these are photopolymer, they're put on the block already. This is my uh, stamped image here that I'm, or the image that I'm going to be having on the circle. And so you can kind of see when you're, if I had that on there, how it's going to be going on like that or so. You can turn it or whatever. I am going to do this with my Memento Black ink pad. You could do this in whatever color you want, but I like the fact that I can use my blends markers with the um, Memento Tuxedo Black pad, and it doesn't, um, it's the right type of 
formulation. You want some of the other ones, they, they, they will work. Our regular ink pads, you just have to be a little bit careful that you don't get too um, heavy handed with the blends or it can make them run. So just to make sure that I don't do that, I'm gonna just use the tuxedo black and put it about there. And we will, yay, that's beautiful. And um, that one's done. So then another one, the other uh, circle, or the other square that we're gonna be cutting out in a, in a circle. This is gonna go on the inside. So I wanna keep that in mind. I'm gonna have the, and better days ahead is gonna go, but it can. it's not like it's got a lot of room. I'm gonna pretty much have to go in the center to be able to um, cut it out so it spans the width of this guy pretty much. So I'm not gonna go too, um, oops, oh my goodness. Pay attention. <laughs> Talking and stamping at the same time. That uh, apparently isn't always easy to do. Oh, man. Okay. So I am going to... It doesn't really matter since you can turn the circle around and get it just so. But I will stamp this in the middle. I wonder if I should go this way. Then I don't have to worry as much about how I get it on there. Okay. There we go. Yeehaw, that looks good. Got those stamps done. And then I'm going to be putting a sentiment strip um, on the main part of the uh, card. And let's see if that fits. What I'd like to do is I, I'm going to use the double, oh, the oh, layered ovals, I believe this punch is called. And I, But it is too big to use for the little one, so I'm just going to use the larger one. And um, for that, I am going to use, do I want to use which color? We, I could go white, I could go um, the yellow, or I could do the Fresh Freesia. And maybe I will pull in um, Fresh Freesia. How's that? We'll get some Fresh Freesia going. <laughs> so I am going to cut it out of, or punch it out of the Fresh Freesia color. So let's get the black back here and... Um, put the main sentiment that's going to go on the front um, we'll do that next and it says here for you now okay and we'll punch that out with our punch I love punches they're so handy oops bonk and they're fast so it's just something they're right there and you don't have to worry about getting anything out except for them and they're just right there when you need it ready to go boom done okay alrighty then we're gonna do some of our um, we're gonna cut out with this die so we are gonna use I'm gonna make sure I don't lose things because that's kind of what I tend to do when I'm when I'm on the camera here, we're going to bring in our, do we want the big one? Or, we can use the mini today. So I'm going to grab my mini die cutter. And it's just the cutest little thing. You can keep it right by your workstation and it works so slick. So we'll just open that guy up and it tells you right on here what you need. You need um, to do the die cutting. You need uh, two of the plates, which are clear, and they're number two. And then the number one is on the bottom. So here's our number one. And here are the number two. Two of those. They get lots of use, can't you tell? Um, and so this is our mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. How's that for a mouthful? Um, Let's do our die cutting. I'll probably do them one at a time just to make sure I get them where I want them. And, um, yes, I put them right on top of my images here that we need to cut out. I was wondering where they went. All right, there's one plate. And we'll put this plate down. Or actually, I usually put my scarred up one down next. Because I, oh, I'm going to need to replace this when I cracked it. How did that happen? Hmm. 
I think I have another one. I might grab one quick, guys, because I don't want to use that. Um, okay. I guess I'm going to have to break out a nice new one. Isn't it pretty? Because I cracked one. I don't know what, if I dropped it or what I did, because they're really tough. But let's, what I do then is I put the one that I'm going to use to get a little bit more beat up. The cutting side is going to be down on that. And then I use, and then I have one that's a little less used. And that's, I kind of rotate them around. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what I do. And then we're going to put this in here. Try not to move it. I see I didn't stamp it the best because it's over to the side a little bit, but... Hopefully I can get that to work. All right. Okay, machine. Oh, and then I put it on here wrong. <laughs> With the handle going the wrong way. Let me turn it. There we go. All right. Coming through. Ooh, sorry if I'm making the camera jiggle. Okay, so here's one of our cuts done. Okay. And... Then we need to do the next cut, which is this one. And cutting edge down again. Here's our image. Okay. And we'll cut that one out wherever we want it. We're going to cut a little bit off, but that is totally fine. That's kind of, I knew that was going to happen. And we are going to put this one on here so that it will be the top plate that doesn't get the cutting edge on it. Okay, all right, crank it through. And wiggle, wiggle. Sorry guys, Ooh. Okay, done with that. All right, there we are, lovely. Okay, I think we're done with that now. Um, I'm going to cut, I think I'm going to, uh, no, I was going to turn it over because it's getting all dirty. I don't want it dirty. I'll just shift over a little bit. Um, so then the next thing I'm going to do is put some color on here and, um, and maybe some on here as well before we adhere them onto the card. So I know I want some yellow. I know I want some of the fresh freesia and those colors are the ones I want to get on here in different ways. Um, since there are leaves, I know that I'm going to need some type of a green. So I'm just going to go with a real subtle green that's super light. And I'm going to use one of our blends markers that is called um, sea, Soft Sea Foam. It's our lightest green. And, but I'm using the dark. Each of these comes in a light and a dark. So you can see it's very light. I don't know if you can see that very well. But um, it's super light and that's all I want. I just want, barely want a little swish of the green in there. And since this is such a hand-drawn hand look, it does not have to be colored in perfectly. Okay. However you want that to be done is going to be lovely and beautiful. It's kind of a no-fail almost. Okay? And if you want it darker, you can um, go back in again on some areas. Um, if you'd like that a certain area to be a little more dark. Um, so that I think that's fine for the green. Um, where do I want yellow? Do I want some of these? I think I just want to use, have a little yellow center. Um... And the, this doesn't, you know, have to be any type of a real flower as far as you don't have to model it after something that's actually um, a flower out there. I just assume, well, it probably is somewhere. <laughs> if not, it should be. And then I'm just going to add in the Fresh Freesia as the main flower co color. I'm going to go with the um, lightest, and then if you, I want to darken anything up, I can do that with the other and come back in. I'm just going to go right over some of it. As you can see, I just color, and I, you don't have to worry about it. It kind of makes it blend together. And each end has that bullet end, or each one has a bullet end and a brush end. Um, and they, depending on what you're doing, 
you can use these are both super handy so I'm sometimes less is more so I'm just gonna try to go barely even over this and the yellow kind of blends a little bit and it just kind of works I don't know it's um, that's all I really need to do with it and it's done oops no it's not hello this guy we need one of these need that and um, I'll put a little yellow, <laughs> yellow on that as well. Just using my blend. So, very free form. Um, I'll show you kind of how that looks. That's all I've done for the coloring. I might throw a little wink of Stella on there, but you can see it's just a real quick, simple, but yet it, it works, I think, anyways. I really like that combination. Um, if you wanted to blend some of the yellow out, you can a little bit more. You just kind of go over those, anything that looks like it has a line. Um, you just kind of color on that line and it really blends the color in. And it makes you look like you meant to do that. Um, you could add a little dark in here and there if you wanted a little darker. But sometimes less is more, and I usually end up, like, wishing I would have stopped earlier than I did. So I'm going to try to do that. Stop. And uh, the Wink of Stella, I probably use that almost every time. And that just adds this little, you can see it right on this one. See how shimmery that is? And then you just push this little bulb, and then it puts that some shimmer right where you want it. Oh, I love this stuff, you guys. It's just, I'm a glitter person. I don't know. It just adds, just makes it look fancy, as they say. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll see if I can get the camera to pick it up. All right. Do you see the shimmer? In person, it's really cool. So, I don't know. I don't really feel like it's picking it up very much. Well, hey, Pat, thank you for stopping by. I love watching you on typically Mondays, I think. Um, I love watching your show quite often. Um, and Cindy, you are here too. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. And I probably, um, you guys, if you've said that a while ago, I apologize. I've just been so into it, I didn't even look. Um, so thank you for joining me, you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, so the better days ahead is the what is going to go on the inside, um, and you know I at the beginning I had given out all those um, all the sizes and everything you need. So feel free to watch the replay as well to get all of that information if you missed it. So the next thing I think before I adhere the rest of it together, I do want to add just a little bit of color <clears throat> with my blending brushes that will kind of color that or keep that um, color going through. So I'm just using the daffodil, uh, was, is that what it was? So saffron and the fresh freesia. I kind of just did that um, effect where the colors are on there, but very subtle in the inside. This is gonna go here. So I'm gonna put some of that color onto this so it's just not quite so stark. And um, I could use one or both or whatever. So either way, I'm gonna bring that back. And let's just go with our blending brushes, with just a little color. Um, I'll probably even just kind of very barely put any on. I just kind of want to make it, it uh, make it kind of cohesive with the rest of the card. And a little bit with my fresh freesia. I like saying freesia apparently because I keep finding myself <laughs> saying weird, saying it in a weird way. I don't know why I do that. So fresh freesia here is going to be on that part of it. And it just kind of makes it all go well together. Quick and easy. Um, I'm going to not do that on the, this piece. And then there's this piece. So all that's really left is to get our ribbon adhered and then put stuff together all right oh what do you, yeah you think it looks really unique well thanks i hope you like it it's a good unique and not a weird but i this will just really 
kind of make it all kind of come together I think and it gives a little room to write there I don't normally put that much DSP in the middle or on the inside I mean but um, I just thought that was so much I just wanted it dressed up a little bit so that's kind of why I decided to do that this is the second largest scallop edge um, in the circle dies oh what is it called again um, these dies are the layering circle dies all right thank you Pat okay so that is going here it's hopefully I did it straight you guys I'm just trying to kind of hurry so we got that done now the front here this will go there so let's put that on and I'm gonna be showing you some more samples in a few minutes here just remember if you are using blends I always want to make sure people know that they do bleed through that is totally normal and okay but just know that you don't want that to show on your project so you don't want to color something without layering something up behind it so this it really doesn't matter as far as what's straight and what's not that's good enough there now I'm going to take my fresh Frisia uh, ribbon and I'm going to be putting that on here. I love to use, as you know, I always use glue dots for um, my ribbon. And so, where did I put my glue dots? Oh, really? They're always in one spot and I don't see them right now. Oh, great. Okay. Um, plan B. Let me get my... Um, seal. So I'm going to put a little bit of seal on one end here. Hopefully, if I can get it to help me out here. And I have this lovely, messy look going on, don't I? It's bugging me. Okay. Here, I'll put it, the fresh freesia behind it. How's that? Okay. So, let's go ahead and adhere this ribbon. This is... Um, our ribbon that is called, um, it is called the um, Fresh Freesia Open Weave Ribbon. Okay, and this came in all the in colors this year, uh, the new ones that came out. So I am going to adhere this about right here and press it down. I'm going to wrap it around. And this is a cheater way. So I'm doing the cheater bow method here. Um, it's a little long, so I don't need that much, but I'm going to put a little more of that adhesive right down there, and we can trim it. Like so. All right. And, oh, by the way, um, I see that you are from Wheaton. That, Wheaton, Illinois. So welcome, Pat. Um, let's see. I'm going to get my little trimmer here I usually have I've been taught I guess <laughs> to have ribbon scissors if you can so I always use these just for ribbon I'm gonna trim that little piece off it's gonna be hidden anyways and then I'm going to adhere on my little sentiment piece I do like to layer I could maybe punch out a white or something and have that behind or even black but um, I'm just going to kind of leave it like this, but I do want to use dimensionals on the back to have that pop up a little bit. So I'll just need a couple on there, I think. Okay. And we're going to put that just kind of off to us the side a little bit, like so. All right. And give that a little press. The next thing I'm going to do is um, get a, some more of the ribbon. I did cheat and tie my bow ahead of time, but um, you don't have to you know, do it that way. But what I do is, t um, here, I'll, show you. I'll do it with you. But since I did trim it down now, I'll probably regret that. Um, so I have two bunny ears, and I'm going to fold this guy over, pull it in. Sure I am. can do it I can do it okay and then I'm gonna fuss with it a little bit 
get it how I want it, like so, and kind of straighten it out and get it looking all cute, hopefully. Like so, maybe? I always end up kind of going smaller and then pulling it tighter and then smaller and pulling it tighter. All right, so that should be fine. Then I am going to adhere it. Again, normally I use my glue dots. And I just do not know what I did with that. It's going to bother me. I'll find it like five minutes after we're done here. So I will attempt to put a little seal um, about where I'm going to be putting it. And I'm going to be putting it over in this area. So I'm going to try to get a little bit of seal in here. Just a titch to adhere my bow. And then I'm going to trim it. So let's put this about, we'll get it straight on so we can see it better. I want to have it about right there. And we'll trim in that. Those tails, they're a little bit long. Like that. Just don't want much of tails on there. So it's mainly just the ribbon. And we kind of just make sure it's not going to show right over those words and sentiments. And we're almost done. It's a very quick card. Of course, I always have to put a little, um, little bling on there, right? And it actually gets, there we go. It looks like so. And we are going to put some of these on there. These are our rhinestone basic jewels. And um, what I like to do is color them. And so I'm going to be using, I'll use one that's, oh, maybe medium and then too small. So I'm going to just cut those off of here. And then, oh, thank you, Pat. You like the color combo. Yeah, I just love that there's both kind of that same tone of just light colored and, um, also another one that looks that I real I maybe should have used, but this um the pale papaya, it's kind of a similar color, but that is another color I love with this fresh freesia. So you know any color combination that you like is with these cards. That's what I like about the black and white uh, DSP is you can make it whatever you want. So I am gonna pull in. Let's see. I'm just going to use the yellow. You could use fresh freesia, whatever you have. And we'll see if we can get these to color a little bit. Probably the fresh freesia would maybe show better. I don't know if this really added much color. Yeah, it actually did. Once I got it a little bit away from my project, I could see that it did get some yellow color on it. It probably won't show on here very well. Um, trust me, they're yellow now. You could do that. They're actually, um, I'm using the Daffodil Delight because I don't have any so saffron um, blends, but um, they're very similar. You'd never know, right? So I'm going to get my Take Your Pick tool here and put these little guys on. Grab the first one. And the first one I'm going to put um, on the top here anywhere I suppose I could on the, the focal point and then I'm going to use these two smaller ones just wherever on the rest of the card so I want one by the sentiment and then one just kind of somewhere else let's see sticking my finger instead okay let's see where we want this one I'll just put it over there all right um project done. Here we go. And here for you now. And again, this was from the color and contour stamp set and the inside and in better days ahead. I can see I need a little more of my blending going on in this spot. So I got a little heavier there and just kind of rub that all together. Okay. And so this is a card you can make with all different types of um, card stock. It, like I am featuring the black and white just to give ideas for what you can do. But of course, any kind of paper is going to work for this. You could use embossing folders um, to put texture. You know, there's it's just limitless. Um, I'm going to show you some that I made.
Okay, some other ideas. To, so here's one that's similar. Um, and on this one, I did thank you kindly. Um, and then on the inside, I don't like my inside. Thank you for all the little things you do and for your big heart. I love the saying. I'm going to probably change how this turned out. I don't like the white over it. But anyways, um, the front I, I did like. And that one has the same the same exact DSP. Um, the, the One of the free uh, hand pinned. What was it called again? It was called... Um, wow. Where is it? Beautifully penned. It's one of the free options coming out in the celebrations. You can see these look like completely different paper in my in my view. Oh, you can't even see them. Great. Here we go. Sorry about that. Off camera. Um, it just kind of depends what you pair it with. And um, I use the blends, different blends markers. I used um, Highland Heather, Gorgeous Grape. I used a couple the couple of the different greens here and just kind of did it with all the blends for this paper. And this one, I used the blending brushes. Similar card, quite a different look to it. But I'll, again, I love that black sparkly um, ribbon that we have. And then, um, I know I have another one. So then there was, this is quite different. Um, this is more of a bright example. Uh, I used um, the same paper. This is the back side of one of the um, papers in the same black and white paper pack that I just showed you. This is um, a Dahlia stamp from a, the Dahlia stamp set that's coming out. Um, and that is this set. It's called Delicate Dahlias. And I like how it really fit right into that size. Um, and then this is a stamp set that is called Sunny Sentiments. And that's the thank you that I used on the inside of that the last one I showed you that I didn't like how it turned out. Um, but it did come from this. I like the saying on it quite a bit. And I love that the hello font that it has here. And so for this one, I um, colored the background just in the same way using blending brushes. And um, the inside I did hoping your birthday is filled with all the best things. And I... Um, have glitter all over on it um, use different types of bling on it but whatever you have is what you can feel free to use and so the last one I'm going to show you is another uh, another example coming out in our celebration no the new mini catalog that's coming out and that one does have a little bit more of a Christmas um, set, more Christmassy type of things in there along with other holidays and some that are not holidays but um, this is a set it's a suite of products and the stamp set is uh, Peaceful Cabin and I this is like one of the first things that I've done with it but I've seen a lot of people using it it comes with beautiful dye sets that cut out um, like that silhouette of a snowbank and the background um, there's a lot to this that I'll be showing you more. I'm not really, I try, I don't do a lot of uh, Christmas in July type things. Um, so I don't do a lot of that this time of year. But with these things coming out, I do like to kind of have some ideas ready. Um, this is, there's some DSP that comes with it. And that is a beautiful specialty paper set. Um, that's part of the suite that is with that same stamp set. You, I don't know if you can see, but it's got silver metallic foil on this. Um, just beautiful paper. Oh my goodness. That, that has metallic foil. This side doesn't have metallic foil, but it does have some little cabins and that kind of thing on there. And here's a metallic. I can see this one getting cut down the center and this way maybe for some cards. Um, really pretty real subtle um, background there. This one is different and it has looks like four can get cut out of it and it, it would give you four six or yeah four six by six squares and boy you can imagine the sky's the limit on that. Um, very subtle kind of some 
trees, kind of pine tree look in the background. And we have one here that's kind of a checkered, various grays. And then look at that, yowza. Um, wow, that's gorgeous. And I know you can't necessarily see the foil that well, but it is so pretty. And like I can see adding navy and making it just look like this beautiful snow scene. And wow, like that alone is just so pretty. I just love it. So I believe that was most of that paper. All right. Um, and of course, I decorate my envelopes to go with it. You got to do that, right? But wasn't this fun? May you enjoy piece of this, the piece of this beautiful season. And um, the background paper is this one from here. Again, it was that black and white and grays, of course, but um, it's got that metallic foil in it. This is a couple of layers here. You can't really see that well, um, but that's part of the dies, and, and it comes with a die that cuts out some of the detail of that cabin to make it kind of pop. Again, I doubt it's doing justice, but um, wanted to show that to you. I've been kind of playing with it and then wishing you the best on the inside. So that's what I came up with. Um, thank you, Pat. And thank you, um, Cindy, for tuning in. Sam, my boy, my son, Sam. Hi. Nice to see you too, hon. All right. Um, Thank you guys all for tuning in and hopefully you got inspired by some some of these projects and you can you know mix it up and have it however you want to do it and that hopefully you'll enjoy it feel free to post it um I have a Facebook page of keep in touch crafts and that would be wonderful I would love to have you post pictures of if you would ever use any of these ideas Feel free to post that, or, or if it, if you want, you can send it to me, and I'd be happy to um, post it for you. So thank you so much, everybody. We will be continuing to share all these new products and get some good ideas, and Pat and all of our group that we're in, and Cindy's in it too, actually. Um, we are all sharing ideas all the time and coming up with some fun new things to do. So I hope you all have a good um, Friday and weekend. Um, take care, stay safe and healthy, and keep in touch. Take care, everybody. Bye.